Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for the debate. Uh, uh, we will try to really reflect on European gas challenges through the developments in the Baltics. And uh, to be honest, uh, this is really a great day for Baltic uh, countries. Uh, uh, we have had very strong uh, hearings of Commissioner Designate for Energy, Kadri Simpson, today. I assume you everybody followed it or at least partially tried to. So congratulations to her. I think it's a difficult exercise, but we wish all the success to her. And she definitely uh, reminded quite a lot of times that she's from Estonia and she mentioned also Baltics. So it's really good to have this. But the reason why we have this, it is really true that the Baltic gas developments have been rather rapid. It started late because some liberalization have been rather late, but today it's really moving forward. And just to give one particular flavor of this, uh, that Eurogas will make a conference uh, in a couple of days, 7th of 8th of October, and the name of this conference is the Baltic region setting the pace for gas market integration. So it is really ambition statement that Baltic region is not only somewhere lagging behind or moving with others, but really trying to push the whole process forward. I also know that ACER put a lot of attention nowadays also to Baltic regions. They have published report on gas tariffs in Lithuania. Uh, they will follow also for gas tariffs in Estonia and Latvia in a couple of days. So there is a lot of development. But the original idea for organizing this webinar comes from Andre Belle. He published a report stepping on the gas. And that's I will start perhaps with Andre, uh, who is a professor uh, at the Eastern University of Finland. Uh, he's uh, living in Tallinn, and he will start to introduce the topic why he believes it is important really to look on the gas. Estonia has, well, not big name in gas uh, until now. Andre, perhaps you discovered uh, this uh, subject for Estonia, but it's also important to mention that Commissioner Designate Kadri Simpson very much emphasized also the gas sector. So it means that gas will face quite a lot of developments under her leadership. Uh, and I, I have no doubt that she will be really approved as I in this position. Andre, let's start with you. Thank you very much. Do you see the slides, I suppose? Uh, yes. Well, uh, that actually um, the map of the current uh, infrastructures in uh, the Baltic region and what is important to understand is that uh, the Baltic countries, as well as Finland, were successful in stopping their position of an energy island, which is entirely separated from the European Union market. At the same time, what is important to craft out, out of the case, as well as of other cases um, of other uh, European countries' origins is that um, we are at multi-speed level in building European Union gas market. You know that a large part of uh, the expert community somehow hoped to um, have a single entry exit zone with a single market of the European Union and that doesn't seem to happen in the nearest future. So, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia and Finland negotiated for a while a common single entry exit zone, but the agreement finally included only three of them, namely Latvia, uh, Estonia and Finland. For some political reasons, um, Lithuania didn't join, I suppose uh, Nemun is going to talk about in more detail. Uh, so the entry exit zone, as you see it on this slide, supposes uh, common entry points, uh, common uh, network uh, charge with uh, entry charges at the beginning. It aims at optimizing gas supplies across the region and, for example, connecting Latvian underground storage that you can see there in a circle to Finnish market, which is the biggest of the three, via the Baltic connector, which you can see between Estonia and Finland. 
also the region expects to have a focus on liquefied natural gas with the development of various projects in Poland uh, and also the existing uh, floating and uh, storage Hello? and regasification. Hello, can you hear me? We do, yes. we do, Margot, you are in, uh, but we are moving, so please, yeah, Andre, please continue, please continue, yeah. Andre. And, uh, um, and what's important with the LNG market, that uh, it moves very fast towards off-grid supplies as well, so it offers tremendous technological uh, opportunities with cost-effective shipment of LNG to off-grid areas, you know that Estonia imports, three companies in Estonia import LNG from a small scale production plant located in Russia, right next to the Estonian border. And there is another case, uh, which is the case uh, of Finland, uh, where a chemical company Eastman plans to import LNG from Tornio and ship by uh, container trucks. So LNG offers really a tremendous uh, interesting technological opportunity to the region. And the conclusion that we made uh, in the report for the International Center for Defense Studies of Estonia is that we need to focus more on demand than on supplies, because demand or insufficient demand is actually the main barrier um, uh, which impedes the development of competition and which is also poses a threat to an insufficient diversification of the market. Uh, so we have to focus on demand, especially in the power sector and in the transport sector, both in CNG and LNG. However, now we face a new challenge, uh, which is related to the new paradigm stemming from the EU decarbonization policy. And now many wonder whether the regional gas agreement contributes to the European Union decarbonization targets or contrarily inhibits the uh, EU goals and uh, targets. And there the main debate might come in the near future. Here I stop. Yeah, thank you, Andre. It was brilliant introduction. Uh, we, we, we scale our, so our discussion basically in three parts. Uh, one part is development of markets, how they performed until now and what to expect in the future. Another part is a bit of some strategic things like energy storage and also the issues related to the uh, uh, LNG. And the last part, how to decarbonize the whole, what role in decarbonization, and Andre's report actually reflects on all the issues that I mentioned today. Uh, I would ask now Yuri Sozolich, our former Minister of Energy of Latvia, and definitely the best energy expert in my country, so perhaps mm -hmm. also one of the best in, in uh, Europe, really to reflect how EU market has, uh, how Baltic market have evolved since the liberalization, because I know that he follows very closely this. I hope that we will see the slides uh, very soon, so there is some something uh, not going, but yeah, we, we, I think we are nearly there. So, Yuris, please. Well, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. <coughs> I, I'd like to start again uh, that uh, some people say there is no common market in uh, Baltic states on gas and markets will just will start uh, when a uh, um, new formula will be introduced. I will say it's not absolutely true. There is common market. It was last year, it is uh, this year. And uh, my proof is I will show you three, three charts. Unfortunately, the very, uh, uh, okay, first one is uh, from my domain, from Latvia. This uh, explains you how uh, gas storage is being filled, fulfilled uh, this year, starting from May 1st. And you see, uh, upper, upper line is uh, a chart is uh, gas which is going down uh, on the earth and where it comes from. It comes from uh, Russia and it comes over the uh, Lithuanian border. 
presumably from LNG terminal. Uh, so already uh, it's evidence that uh, markets are working. This is uh, oh, this is not from my my territory. It's for my Nemunas, but I hope you will be not jealous. As data are not stolen, they are opened, uh, are accessible. It shows what is happening uh, in a terminal this year and what happening on uh, Lithuania, Latvia border. I just uh, would like to pay your attention on these uh, two numbers. How much? Uh, sent out of flypad happens up till now this year uh, 11 point uh, this is end day is uh, last day of september i made uh, my estimates this is a daily consumption in uh, gigawatt hours and you see that about one third uh, went over the latvian border which means market working uh, latvia is already in a global uh, lng market uh, lithuanian traders obviously sending gas, uh, storing for winter season on for resale or maybe um, resale later. So this is again evidence that even existing uh, tariff structure, uh, negotiation structure allows trade definitely simpler tariffs are always better. And uh, one more thing, uh, when we're talking about uh, gas uh, flexibility, is it, uh, I, I will show you how uh, underground gas storage was working physically, responding on demand for uh, flexibility, because uh, in Latvia the biggest uh, consumer is uh, cogeneration or uh, combined cycle, uh, big two combined cycle gas units, which are uh, working in a com very competitive uh, hourly basis in North, uh, in North Pool, which means coming down to zero to 10% of uh, capacity and building up in a night hours and uh, maximum in a two uh, peak hours, which means that uh, Gas must be uh, as uh, flexible as, uh, nece uh, as necessary for electricity market. So, I, with this, I just uh, giving you information or two signals: markets working, and they are able to provide flexible gas. Thank you, Yuri. Happy to give to somebody else. Yeah. Now I uh, would like to, to ask uh, Nemunas big news because Nemunas is from Amber Grid, so really market participant and uh, well, um, uh, Lithuania has come through quite a very stormy development in this. But before Nemunas starts, I would remind you that you could put a questions to our panelists because we have had already quite a lot of information now. So you could put a question in the box and as soon as it will come in, I will try really to use that the moment and to ask the panelists a question. It would be good if you, when you listen, uh, to, to ask to whom you would like to put the question. If not, then I will ask whoever is ready uh, uh, to answer, I already see the first uh, uh, question from uh, Christoph, but Nemonas, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to start uh, from uh, from the perspective, because in the energy, it is uh, very important to make decisions based on on one or few uh, months uh, uh, that is going on, but uh, to make to, to try to, 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 to understand the full context. Uh, and here we see two main issues. It is the first one, it is the security of supply. The second one, it is market. The first issue we had to solve, it was security of supply. I would like to remind you uh, that uh, in year 2012, uh, according to the uh, regulation uh, 994, uh, we have made in Lithuania uh, risk assessment. And the N minus one criteria was 27%. What we did, uh, we, we understood that uh, we are insufficient in supplies. 
And what we did is the, the full row of decisions made uh, by the state. There was uh, there were many discussions in a BEMI, BEMI format, and then the LNG terminal was constructed. So that's the first part of the of the story. What we did next, we looked through at the market. Klaipeda LNG terminal would have never had a possibility to supply other countries if internal infrastructure was not built. So uh, we have constructed a uh, uh, few pipelines in Lithuania just to make uh, it possible to supply uh, to, towards uh, uh, northern, uh, northern uh, part of the Europe. So it's, it's Latvia, Estonia and so on. So that is uh, about infrastructure. If we talk about the, uh, the market and recently ongoing market uh, developments, uh, yes, uh, Lithuania is now not in the same uh, boat we just call Finestlat, yes. But uh, nevertheless, we, we, we are still participating in the regional uh, discussions because this regional market project is not what happens overnight. It, it just takes time to have all the uh, interests uh, on table and to have a decision made. So yeah, it might take some time. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the Finnish flat uh, zone is yet not fully complete because uh, Finnish part has to to implement some uh, legal uh, changes in the in the legislation. Uh, so also, yeah, well, they had have the rules to be set and to to, to prove if they are working. But uh, the entry point, as as uh, Andre mentioned, we have the same price for the entry point uh, in Lithuania. Also, that's important to to, to mention. We just only have uh, the the IP point not zero between Lithuania and Latvia, and that is the part of the. Uh, decisions we have to find with our partners uh, how to go on uh, and uh, how to uh, to make that all the infrastructure that is used by the market is is covered by the market also so it's that is what important in here it's not uh, so important the speed it's most important the uh, sustainable decisions in in this case Okay, thank you, Nemonas. Uh, could uh, I will use the two questions already from Christoph, and I will address to Nemonas and also to Andre. Uh, one is a question that he asked: uh, Russian gas and LNG. Is there gas coming from Poland and Germany? And the other, uh, what his comment is: It seems to me that the connection to European liquid hubs might be important for Baltic countries. What would be your comments, Nemonas, and then Andre? Yeah, uh, I fully agree that uh, connection to, to the whole main uh, European uh, system will be crucial. So we are working on that. We have a decision uh, and uh, we, we are already in the, in the procurement procedure of GIPL, gas interconnection between Poland and Lithuania. So this pipeline will serve for the whole northern market in, in Latvia, Estonia and Finland as a connection uh, to, to, to the main uh, European uh, system and, uh, and the markets. So it will make an impact, definitely. Uh, the other issue is about LNG. Uh, LNG is coming to Kalaipeda from uh, Varao's position. So we should understand what we have made with, by, with Kalaipeda. It is security of supply, the first issue. The other issue, it is the import of the price basically so uh, so lng is coming from uh, norway from united states uh, from yeah from Vysotsk, from russia some part uh, some from other countries so basically we're importing the security and the price right uh, complementing to what neuma said indeed the connection to european uh, liquid markets is uh, very important and the price connection is already kind of occurring because when companies make their transactions they refer to gas pool price or to TTF price so in terms of uh, conjuncture of prices it's already happening yeah Latvian traders are using gas for all as a reference price no, no problem and no, no need for physical connection they agree yeah. that that is okay. 
if I may now to, to turn uh, to Yuris and also to Andre, uh, because uh, Nemunas used the formulation uh, thin as the lat uh, boat. Uh, so, what does it mean uh, for uh, Latvians uh, to be in this boat and uh, that uh, Lithuania is not this, in the boat? And the same to Andre, uh, Estonia is in this thin as lat boat and Lithuania is not. Is it a big issue because Nemunas slightly addressed with this entry point, but uh, how, it, uh, how it should be seen, or it is rather crucial that we continue negotiations that Lithuania joins this boat, and, and then we can say it's Baltic boat, not uh, uh, Finn est uh, lat boat. Juris, what do you think about this? Well, uh, it is already agreed uh, on uh, entrance uh, tariff in uh, Lithuania, sorry, uh, Estonia, Latvia, Finland, and it would be in a force from January 1st, and uh, you remember what uh, Nemonas was saying, that uh, uh, we, uh, there is a, a border price between uh, Latvia uh, Lithuania, which is not zero, like it would be between Estonia uh, Latvia. But in fact, for uh, customer, is uh, no matter, because uh, there would be no reduction of costs uh, for uh, use of transmission system. This is internal distribution of incomes uh, fully uh, among and only among uh, operators. It will make market uh, for traders simpler, but it will not make anything more uh, uh, less expensive. The costs would be always covered by by use of a transmission system, uh, uh, storage or LNG terminal. So, uh, but it is revolutionary uh, because it really will uh, give for traders and uh, uh, customer, final customers uh, or um, uh, tra tradings in wholesale, feeling that you are in, in one trading area like we have in, in electricity. And that would be really, really revolutionary. But that, uh, I would say that the uh, markets are working uh, pretty well even today. Mm -hmm. Andrei, I would, what uh, is your news? I would definitely complement to what uh, Yuri says. Uh, just some facts. By 2020, Latvia and Estonia plan to create their common balancing platform for trade. And by 2022, Finland is expected to join as well. So that definitely will allow to have uh, more trade, to have um, possibility for any supplier to trade their own uh, natural gas, uh, regardless whether it's LNG or not, because they uh, would trade um, uh, the MBTUs or uh, megawatt hours uh, there. Uh, well, in terms of implications, implications are clear. Uh, there is a possibility to have uh, uh, an access to the market from any point of the entry exit zone. Yeah? Regarding uh, what Yuri said um, of the distribution of revenues, that's exactly one of the alleged reasons of non-participation by Lithuania, that Lithuania uses its transit contract, which is indeed politically maybe or economically sensitive to share with other member states. And uh, that's my question maybe to, to Nemunas, whether after the expiration of the transit contract with Gazprom for transiting gas from Belarus to Kaliningrad region, would Lithuania maybe join the entry exit zone as well? That's my question. Nemunas, uh, you heard the question. So. Uh... Uh, in San Andres' report, he also mentions this, that most pro probably the main reason that uh, there is a transit contract that somehow is uh, well, hampering Lithuania's ability already now to participate in this entry exit zone. Uh, I don't know if you agree with his statement, perhaps there are other factors as well, but how do you see this? Okay, uh, first of all, uh, we should understand that uh, uh, all those uh, common zones, they are related to internal market. 
and to internal market to ease the internal market to ease the trades to 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 stop pancaking and so on uh, the transit itself it is not a part of internal market and Lithuanian participation or not participation in 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 common it's it's not uh, caused by by transit anyhow it's 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 out of the scope uh, the main issue actually it is uh, the infrastructure that is used for common market so basically it is about uh, about the LNG terminal also we should stress out that at the moment uh, the whole costs of the uh, LNG terminal are covered basically by Lithuanian consumers and only other countries they are not uh, paying for this infrastructure although they get the benefits of this infrastructure because the prices uh, have changed uh, I should uh, I should uh, probably remind uh, for everybody that in 2008 they, they were reaching almost uh, 500 dollars for, for 1000 cubic meters so so the the situation changed dramatically and those contracts uh, that were mentioned before that they are connected to gas pool and so on so these changes they were enforced by the possibility of alternatives so basically the alternative that is covered by Lithuanian market so that is the issue not it's not about the not about the transit if we are talking about internal market uh, for the uh, common rules for everybody so that is the issue basically okay uh, here is a question and it's immediately up to Nemonas uh, Johannes Ritter asks are the Baltics really able to buy LNG on high market prices uh, compared to Asia LNG vessels usually are floating to the best buyers and then what about security of supply well, yeah. this, this year we had bought uh, 12 uh, tankers up till now, and uh, all slots are uh, bought in Klaipeda, which means uh, Baltic, Baltic uh, customers are absolutely able to participate in a global market. Uh, gas is not coming for, for free, but the uh, but situation is very, very uh, good for, um, for uh, customers at the moment. Uh, gas uh, storages are full. Uh, gas prices in in, uh, in Asia and Europe yeah, are I si agree because nearly similar. And as Nemona said, uh, uh, yeah, and as Nemona said, there is uh, gas from Norway, from the United States, and we might uh, see this on gas quality in Latvia. So, it's uh, again it's functioning against all so skepticism. So, uh, Nemunas and Andre, do you agree with what you, you just said? So basically, Baltics are playing the world game, and so, yes, there are always risks as in any uh, business, but uh, we are able to really to buy LNG uh, well on the market when uh, the price is good. Uh, who will go, Andre, please? Uh, no, I, I would, would even say. Oh. Please. Andrew. I will, I will uh, definitely agree with Juris that the market is functioning and uh, there are bilateral contracts between, for example, uh, Russian suppliers and Baltic importers who are indexed to the uh, gas pool price, yeah, for example. Then there are also yeah. LNGs. We don't know. We don't know. Which, gas pool price is used in a, in an internal market, for instance, in Latvia. How, how what is the price uh, or in Klaipeda? Uh, we don't know. Yeah, and, and the thing, the main uh, critique, basically towards uh, or let's, let's uh, main challenge uh, to make the Baltic market entirely functioning is to see uh, the end of the state aid uh, for Klaipeda is what at least local uh, stakeholders see and i would believe that at some point once the market is more liquid then the state aid will not be needed anymore and uh, we see already as uh, nemona says the type the terminal is increasingly used and uh, then at some point the subsidy to the lng market will not be useful anymore nemonas are you heard uh, of Andre's point of view about uh, well, 
uh, the next question I will would also connect with this, uh, uh, definitely LNG terminal in Klaipeda made a lot of difference for Baltic countries, no question about it. And that was rather crucial, I think, in a lot of things also for Europe. So, but how is the future of, of this terminal? Because this state aid and Andre says, well, it's not needed anymore. Uh, just allow, allow the market to play. Do you believe in this? Uh, we should uh, understand a few issues that, uh, first of all, uh, there was a, a decision of, of European court uh, that, uh, yeah, state aid, uh, state aid was, uh, was okay in, in terms of, of, uh, of, of legal decisions. Uh, the second issue is that uh, uh, there is a, a decision of Lithuanian parliament of 2018 that uh, uh, Lithuania will maintain and, and will still uh, keep uh, the terminal after 2024. That's a very important statement and, and very important decision. Mm -hmm. So the first thing. The other thing is that uh, actually it's called state aid, but basically uh, for the terminal and for the security of the supply of our country, basically the consumers are paying. It's not paid by state or by someone else. So yes, we have to find the way to maximize uh, the uh, economical uh, action of the terminal and uh, economically to to get the uh, the uh, tariffs uh, to maintain the terminal so that that is very important so personally me i do believe that we will find the the right uh, uh, way of tarification of the terminal that will reduce the costs for the consumers and uh, it will be fully uh, operational under uh, under uh, economical uh, usual economical uh, conditions. So that that is uh, the main message. Good. Uh, if I may, similar question ask to yours. I read recently an interview of uh, Conexus uh, chairman, uh, and she said, "Well, we have excellent year for the gas storage." Uh, uh, we have a lot of reservations and we need to ex expand capacity. But what she said, well, it is also a very good year. It's a huge spread between winter and summer prices. And as a result, well, the market works. But when there is a less demand for reservation, so you need to use something that decreases volume. And the storage is not so flexible in a sense that it could respond to big differences in the reservations or use of the storage. Uh, so do we need some special, well, uh, aid mechanisms for storages or just will we need really to allow market to play? Well, it's bad year. Okay, storage responded as much it can uh, work. Uh, good year, well, then storage is expanding or it should be a bit seen uh, specifically storage, like also LNG terminals, that we need a bit do some, so yes, st some type of state aid in some situations, or you would say it's absolutely unnecessary. Well, uh, it is a big debate, a regulatory debate at the moment in Latvia, and uh, uh, between uh, uh, system operator, Connexus, and, and reg Latvian regulator. I, on a, on a side, saying that we need, uh, for we need to pay for security. Otherwise, you might be in a trouble. Like, uh, similar is absolutely the same with a terminal like with the LNG uh, uh, in, in Klaipeda. If you would like to uh, maintain any hour uh, ready to, to use it in, in any circumstances, uh, you have to pay for that. We having all this stuff in electricity, we having in, in district heating everywhere. Uh, for that reason, uh, it's not a, you, let, you cannot uh, make comparison with uh, uh, the biomass in a renew, uh, in a, in a renewable sector. But uh, gas, uh, I would say, you cannot maintain uh, or, or to keep flexibility on a proper level, not, uh, not having uh, some uh, security or, or, or precautions to be always in use. For that reason, I will uh, support the uh, position of, uh, of operator who understand, sorry for saying that, much better than regulators sometimes. 
Uh, do you, Nemuna and Andre, do you share your uh, viewpoint on security of supply that we need to pay for security of supply? Uh, well, whatever tariff is decided by regulator, but it's not just market that is playing. Yeah, uh, if I may. Uh, Europe understood that it is crucial to pay for the security of supply after year 2009, yes? So then it started, all those decisions were made that we have to make uh, uh, our energy system less vulnerable and uh, yeah, it costs. So definitely besides the market, we have uh, the main issues, it's energy, it's, it's a weapon. Yeah, We fully understand that. So we, we understand with, we have to invest into the basic infrastructure to have it secure and reliable. Good. Andre? You well, I prefer we we move forward. Um, I have expressed part of the uh, of the opinion on the Baltic energy security in the report, and uh, I share partly the views which were expressed. And so I think there are a uh, number of questions below which I see which can be also addressed. Uh, if I may, there are a couple of questions related to the market issues, but I would like to move to the issue that perhaps is the most crucial. There is a question by Agata Loskot Strahota. How do you see the role of gas in the future energy mix? I know that, Andre, in your paper, you very strongly argue that Estonia should turn towards the gas, actually for the future challenges. And I've, that's why I would start with you, because at the end of the day, uh, with this carbon neutrality so strongly also defended today by Kadri Simpson, there will be fundamental changes in energy mix. And then the question comes, what role of gas? And I, I really would say to your view and then to move to Yuris and then to Nemunas on this issue, because this is, I think, is a key question that industry now asks, and I think also consumer now asks. Andre. Right. Well, personally, I think that decarbonization targets should not miss much from other priorities of the European Union or of any other member states or non-member states in socio-economic issues. Uh, full uh, drop of the fossil fuels at this stage of the economic developments is simply unfeasible. Uh, just think about decarbonization of the central district heating sector, which is simply technologically is impossible. I spoke about it with some very advanced uh, Finnish researchers who are considering decarbonization of the central district heating in Finland, and they say it's impossible at this moment, at this stage of development. So, of course, natural gas is extremely important also for the, for the transport sector, for the heating sector, and it will remain important. Then the question is about all these new gases, or hydrogen, which would come. Let's not forget the economic rationale, right? And um, the, the, the objective of the decarbonization should not consist in hindering the economic competitiveness, but in improving it. Yuris, what is your view about future role of gas uh, in a uh, way towards decarbonization? Definitely, first is you, you need to uh, look around in your country, what assets you're having and what has been built. We, we do have an excellent uh, state-of-art uh, uh, um, assets for production of electricity and heat from gas. And uh, it is important, and we having uh, we put a lot of money in gas infrastructure as well. Those are telling. We, we having a bit different um, uh, composition of uh, consumption with uh, Nemona's country. Uh, we are using more uh, gas for electricity uh, and for heat, and practically nothing for industry. It very much depends what would be demand, what customers will need. But anyway, we having new new assets. We need to use them up to end. And other uh, consideration is uh, gas is would be playing very important role in a decarbonization process when more uh, renewables will coming on stream, special, especially uh, wind and uh, solar. 
Nema nas. Potez Jorbius. It's a very natural place for gas. Yeah, I, I, I share the views uh, of the colleagues. Basically, in the company, we already made a decision not to, not to focus on natural gas only. It's, uh, it's about gas. It's about uh, biogas, it's about hydrogen, it's about uh, other uh, uh, synthetic gases because uh, as, uh, as we are going to, to more uh, carbon neutral uh, future, we have to assure as a system operator uh, of, uh, of natural gas system that, uh, that gives the flexibility for the, might give the flexibility for the electricity system also. If we are thinking about uh, uh, vast uh, investments in, 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 in uh, wind power generation, uh, I mean uh, offshore, then uh, uh, we will have to make uh, the backup. Uh, of course, it's probably it might be a power to gas uh, project. So we as a company are preparing to, to have uh, the pilot uh, power to gas project in, in western part of Lithuania. Also, we are working with uh, biogas producers and uh, our aim is to connect as much biogas uh, to, to our system as, as it is possible. Also, uh, the uh, huge tremendous changes, they, they happened in Lithuania uh, since last 10 years. Because basically the whole district heating was based on natural gas, and now uh, about 80% uh, of of district heating uh, is provided by uh, wood chips. So uh, it's a tremendous change in this uh, field, uh, and basically natural gas serves as a peak shaver and the security of supply uh, uh, measures uh, just to to have. Uh, to have the the heat uh, when it's uh, some outages of of the uh, biomass system. So one thing and another thing also, uh, if we are looking at the synchronization and uh, we have a lack of uh, generating capacities uh, here in Lithuania, we see and also in other Baltic countries also as a possibility to have some part of 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 the electricity generation that is very flexible, quite fast uh, to have from natural gas. So that is our view, basically more to the support of the of the whole uh, whole less carbon in, in intense energy sector. Okay, could I ask a, a question uh, to Nemonas? You are considering power to gas. Uh, who would pay for the extra costs and also for biogas injection? So who is? Is there some specific tariff that is interesting, or uh, what? What? Are, what is economics behind this type of approach? How you deal with this? Yeah. Okay. So uh, talking about the power to gas, yeah, still it's 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 uh, the project only on the paper. We are uh, putting uh, in places the things we are trying to find out. Uh, uh, also, the economical logic of this, uh, as uh, as uh, wind generate, generating uh, units will have to balance themselves. We think it might be a possibility uh, to cover it by by balancing costs, uh, and Lithuania has an aim to be uh, almost self sufficient by 2050. So we will have to to have uh, many, much more megawatts. Uh, uh, installed than we than 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 actually were using. So just uh, to have. Uh, uh, to have balanced uh, system, so uh, and and sometimes it will happen that we will have over capacity of uh, of wind power installed, so it's one issue. The second issue about uh, about uh, biogas, so we see it uh, that uh, biogas producers uh, uh, will uh, as and and we as a as a system operator we are participating in the in the regulatory uh, system, so. We expect that this market uh, will function by themselves, and they will co cover their costs also. Also, at the moment, they are, they are covering. Uh, they should uh, they are, should be covering their costs uh, according to the legislation. Okay. Any comments from Andre or Yuris on this? Uh, I just need to remind you, uh, colleagues, that uh, we having an enormous task in two, 25. We need to be disconnected for. Uh, Form a USSR power system and uh, becoming a part of uh, integrated Central European with uh, regular uh, with the fre frequency regulatory responsibilities. Uh, gas would be absolutely instrumental. Mm -hmm. Andre, okay, uh, quick uh, point on biogas is extremely important to see biogas integrated in the uh, energy mix. 
and uh, from what I have observed, and I put it in my report as well, uh, that uh, there is a big potential for biogas, for biomethane, to be mixed in CNG, compressed natural gas, for the transport sector. And there we already see up to 40% of Estonian CNG-driven vehicles are on biogas. And the reason incremental advantage of biogas, which is a support to a circular economy. Whereas I'm less sure about all this new synthetic gases and hydrogen, and some regional stakeholders are very skeptical about hydrogen, mostly because uh, it uh, it takes away an important a pivotal industry uh, from uh, uh, chemical industry. So um, there are more challenges there. If I may to conclude this, uh, there is a lot of countries are now preparing this climate and energy plans. And I have seen in some countries that they favor switching towards electricity heating, for example. Uh, then there is a target for electrical cars. Um, uh, Andre, you very much uh, have been in favor of gas. So also defending the use of gas in transport. Uh, what the strategy should be in Baltic countries? I think the plans, well, they are in development. Uh, they, do, do they really need to focus also by far more with targets on providing more gas in heating uh, because of flexibility and also possibility to be clean, also to have a targets for uh, gas use in the transport or so they should be neutral, or they should follow this electrification tendencies that I see in Germany and this time, and also in Netherlands. What is your views on this? Can I start? Then um, the main the main challenge for electrification of the, the road transport is the price of the vehicle. Like uh, the vehicles all, all driven on electric uh, uh, lithium engines are uh, twice more expensive than their brothers with fuel combustion. And uh, this element will be the main impediment for, uh, uh, for the transport sector to be, let's say, competitive at this point of time. Maybe in 10 years it's going to change. And the second challenge is the investment into additional electricity grids necessary to connect to charging points, which is again not an easy task. Maybe in 10 years or in 15 years it will be. But for now, of course, is a focus on natural gas. Because if we don't focus on those solutions which are feasible now in the short term, then the danger is to see road transport emissions growing in order that road transport, and particularly uh, heavy truck vehicles, constitute the main incremental growth in greenhouse gases in Europe. Nemonas and then Yuris on this issue. Nemonas, what do you think about the strategies uh, concerning transport, role of gas for heating and uh, transport? That's what basically my question is. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's sad that uh, uh, natural gas is not very widely used uh, in, in Lithuanian transportation sector. Uh, I am not a very big expert in in uh, uh, electrical cars, but uh, I really I, I really expect the, their batteries to be uh, to be uh, much better, and uh, uh, therefore it is I think the main stop for for the uh, city transportation and for for the heavy vehicles. Also, it is the distance that you can go by that. So natural gas, it is here. It's uh, it has some some good uh, good points and uh, especially when when you are uh, purchasing not not just natural gas you are purchasing the green gas, so you are covering uh, the the the, uh, the the yeah the CO2 uh, but uh, yeah so it, it's it's the one thing uh, yeah when talking about uh, uh, about uh, about the uh, households and so on so. Basically, uh, uh, I I expect that uh, uh, if we are using it only for the for the heating, uh, then uh, uh, it will not increase the consumption. 
I I see that people are building the new houses and using uh, heat pumps, but also they are installing uh, the solar panels. So I, I think this is the way that uh, that uh, that the countries will go, and uh, obviously it's it's happening already now. So that's very very simple way. Yuris, how do you see the chances for gas in heating and? Customers will choose. There was a question about district heating in, in Baltic states. We, we, I, I must say there's a very well developed district heating systems in uh, Baltic states for that reason. Gas uh, and, and uh, need for uh, the source is uh, desperate sometimes. Gas is clean, accessible, uh, not only uh, for residential, big residential buildings, but in the individuals. But back to transport, again, first is customer will choose, but there is a something for government to do. These are environmental regulations, uh, how you will regulate uh, air quality in, in your cities and, and towns. And that would be a question, what kind of uh, uh, source you will use, biogas or natural gas? Again, depend on, on customers, which technology then they will be using. Good. Um, now we have two questions that are more broader, what I would like to, to discuss. One is definitely to Nemon as a question. Uh, there is about what chances for new Lithuanian nuclear power plant to, to actually be built, and more generally, how can regional nuclear power plants influence outlook for gas in the region? Uh, well, we have uh, in, uh, in Russia, we have most probably they will build something in Belarus. So it's like a two questions. Is Lithuania building a new power plant? I think that is a one part. A second part is how the nuclear power plants that could be built, and one is already built, could influence outlook for gas. Okay. So, uh, yeah, a uh, nuclear power plant is now not being built in Lithuania. Uh, there was a referendum that said that we will not construct. Probably the main uh, the main decision was made because uh, it should be as a regional project. Of course, it is uh, quite a, a substantial amount of money to invest, and it's uh, it's in megawatts counting. In megawatts, is also a substantial unit. So uh, to construct su such a such a power plant, we should uh, we should have an agreement between few countries, not uh, not only by by Lithuania. Uh, on the other hand. Uh, seeing uh, recent developments in, in, in renewables and following then the strategy of, uh, of uh, Lithuanian uh, energy independence uh, that we don't have uh, the plans to construct a nuclear power plant until 2050 we have uh, plans to to be uh, to go on on the uh, renewables uh, almost fully so that is uh, that is uh, the main message also that is in the d decided by the parliament of Lithuania. Okay, and then the question that Andres br brings in his article, he be really believes that this vertical integration is too big, really to fully uh, open the forces of the market. Uh, Andre, could you elaborate on the point that uh, you very very prominent in your uh, in your uh, report stands that, well, basically, there is not enough competition. And you say, well, it's regulators, but I would say perhaps it's competition authorities should look at it. Definitely. And um, the issue is that uh, competition authorities uh, are not active enough in the gas sector. That has been my uh, personal observation about Estonia. And uh, what is actually interesting is that we sometimes observe and an inverse vertical integration when uh, big buyers uh, control the network and they have privileged relations with the suppliers and then you practically have the vertical integration. And the final question I would like to, to put to Yuris, um, it is come from Fernanda Skiana. Yeah, uh, before I see. I see. you see the question, yeah? I so see. it's rather, uh, it's a good question, I think. Uh, can you tell something more on how the entity is? I think it's, it really uh, would be tested. If, uh, if this uh, 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 integrated um, uh, area would be implemented from January 1st, 
uh, that we only later probably will uh, have some information. You, are, you, you have to understand this is internal information just for uh, uh, operators, for their accounts, for their uh, compensation. And they would have a big freedom to do this. Uh, I hope that regulators will help them. But again, we cannot uh, say such in great detail what you are asking, uh, Fernanda. We, we need to wait uh, the, the project before implemented. As I was telling for the very beginning, you have, you have to test markets first to make uh, assessments later. Any comment from the colleagues, Nemonas? You are not yeah, part I, of it. I, I, I do. I do agree that uh, we, we should uh, we should see. I understand that colleagues they, they have agreements uh, how they will compensate. Uh, probably uh, probably it is uh, they have calculated some internal flows uh, between uh, countries. So it will depend much on the on the flows between the countries, uh, uh, and that, that will will impact. Uh, I think that they will settle it uh, somehow. I haven't seen actually uh, the methodology how they agreed on that. So. Yeah, it's happening already in electricity market. We gas people simply must take a template from electricity operators. Good. Yeah. Uh, there was a question, and uh, we have uh, was still about uh, there is a uh, was question that uh, the ta exit tariff in Kemenai seems to be pretty high comparing to the other tariffs in Lithuania. To what extent do they impact gas trade in the Baltics? Well, actually, uh, the gas trade is going on, as Yuris mentioned, and uh, now, uh, until now, we have, uh, I think, uh, 3.5 terawatt hours uh, transported uh, to to Latvia this year. So, yeah, so it 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 uh, it, it costs some uh, some uh, some uh, money, but it's not uh, crucial for the for the market as the gas prices are really at the, at a good uh, good position at the moment. Well. And now I, I could conclude uh, saying, uh, first of all, you could watch what we have discussed today. Uh, also, in, we, we have made registration. So anybody who has only partly could see or would like to recommend to colleagues or friends, you can watch uh, this again. And also uh, other people could have access to it. Then uh, I would like to thank uh, Yuri Suozolinch, Andrei Belli, and Nemunas Big News for this excellent and very knowledgeable information about Baltic markets. And for everybody, I would say, well, Baltics will have not only energy commissioner, uh, but it's also, it's very dynamic markets in uh, electricity and now also in gas. And what, what future role of gas, I think, uh, uh, in my opinion, at least in Baltic region, the gas will play, continue to play a very prominent role, uh, not only now, but also as the time will pass, because basic decisions actually are taken, and that leaves a lot of role for gas, but also gas should be competitive and attractive for final use. And I think that's where, as Yuris mentioned, government policies will play a very strong role because this process, at least, it seems for me in the EU, very much is influenced by government choices. It's not so market-driven as you would expect. So thank you very much, and thank you very much for everybody who joined us. Uh, so that's thanks from me, and bye from me, and bye from my panelists as well. Pleasure to be. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Bye.